Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. What am I doing? So today we are going to take a look at a product from a company that I personally never heard before. The company I'm talking about is Mir Tech. It's written M-Y-I-R Tech. It's a Chinese company and they just came up with a socket and module SOM and its own carrier board. And in the heart of that SOM is an RK3576. This is what I'm talking about. So Mir Tech and it seems like it is make your idea real. That's where the mirror is coming from. So this make your idea real company came up with, as I said, an SOM. So we are going to open it up. The product that I'm talking about is this particular product, MYD LR3576. They have Chinese and the other side I'm assuming. Yep, there is English. Okay, good stuff. This is parts list. Okay, so inside, yes, we have the carrier board. They took all the fun away. They already inserted the socket on module already installed on the board with the cooler as well anyway let me cut it open so here you go it's beautiful actually okay we're gonna take a look let me see what else is in there so we have all sorts of plugs i just need the us one these can go back actually we don't have to take that one out so i actually bought a separate one so this is what is under that gigantic cooler. This is the socket on module. Separately, I purchased this. Oh, wow. That is beautiful. It looks like a CPU. So this bad boy is the socket on module and that's how you install it, I guess. You just drop it on in there. They definitely get the sexy award from me. Very small and compact. It's smaller than the, you know, CM5 and CM4 and all that stuff. Let me bring one for comparison. This is the Raxa CM5. Okay, look at the size. And the connectors are like this. This is CM4. Look at the size. All right. And the connectors are like that. And we'll Whereas this wins the sexiest award. But does sexy mean anything here if nothing works? No. So we're going to check everything on this. I checked the website. They had manual documentation, GPIO pinouts, and that's why I decided to purchase. This bad boy is 100 bucks. And if you buy this kit that comes with the power adapter, the cooler, the one SOM already installed, and the carrier board, this is 150 bucks. So this bad boy comes with RK3576, which is an octa core and it comes with four cortex a72 and four cortex a53 which is respectively 2.2 gigahertz and 1.8 gigahertz and comes with the arm molly g52 mc3 gpu six stops there is a four gigabyte and eight gigabyte lpddr4 ram options there is a 32 gigabyte and 64 gigabyte emmc options and as far as i know there's no option with no emmc there's 32 kilobyte eprom so that's on this and in terms in terms of this bad boy, the carrier, this one does have a lot of I.O. as you can see. So there is two gigabit Ethernet ports over here and there is two USB 3 ports on this and the one HDMI full size and this is the display port I guess micro or mini display port so power jack USB-C and four buttons so this is mask ROM reset power on and this is 55 and 54 just the buttons programmable I guess there's a QR code hopefully we'll take it to the product page on the back we have is a MIPI DSI MIPI CSI 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 so three cameras one display and then there is 2280 NVMe SSD slot and there's a SD card slot what I want to do now they have a Debian image on their website I think they are going to release an Ubuntu image and they had a full source package which basically you will be able to use the source package to build your own Linux and they say they included every single thing from cross compilers to everything else okay just keep that in mind so what i'm going to do is power this bad boy up and then we're gonna take it for a spin try the operating system test the nvme ssd test the speeds check out the gpio and all that stuff all right give me a couple of minutes let me set things up i will be right back all right, I wired everything up so you can see the power consumption on the board and I placed an SD card right there. So Ethernet, mouse and keyboard, HDMI and the SD card. That's all I did. And I'm going to keep this around because it's so sexy. So let's see what we're going to get. One, two, three. Let's see. OK, I'm not going to do fast forwarding here. I just want you to see how long it takes to boot. And. 
and we're in that's the speed okay this is the second board that i'm seeing that comes with the operating system that causes that stutter thing and you guys are keep telling me it's most likely because of the rock chip driver or whatever i don't know what's going on i only wish that these vendors or the rock chip just figure this out and fix this this is not acceptable that's not how you compete with raspberry pi 5 but anyway let's keep going there is a you know as you can see it's snappy it's fast it's fine but after a couple of seconds there is one little glitch one little stutter also to be fair they are shipping with their own lightweight linux but i didn't want to go there i just want to try debian okay so let me do a fast fetch and as you can see it's already complaining about the leap gl and uh, drivers and glx and other stuff but okay we're gonna go there let's take a look at what we have so we have a debian uh, bookworm 12.7 and mirror board is there by the way it's a linux kernel 6.1 which is nice i usually see 510 as you guys also see this is a 1920 1080p it was 4k i just dropped it 1080p so xfc is there and the cpu is rk 3576 is already there and by the way as you can see the idle is extremely low and i love that i don't think i saw any complete board that idles at 2.5 2.6 watts that part is impressive i get it as you can see the gpu is the lvm pipe so i can already tell 4k playback youtube stuff they are gonna stutter and all that but let's do this one step at a time so i'm gonna do write that long ass command and do a stress ng give me a couple of seconds all right i have to do that in su and there is no sudo so i have to drop to the shell so okay let me open a new one su there you go and uh, now i'm going to copy this okay so i started the test power consumption when you are using every single core and thread in the system goes up to six watt that is very impressive and the heat so far is not much it's not even hot at all so six watt seems to be the cap on this device and it's holding up very well okay so we are getting five thousand in raspberry pi 5 you will get 870 900 let's call it thousand so this is five times that but that stutter you saw that there is a after a couple seconds glitch anyway we got the score score is super impressive i gotta say that so anyway let's keep going let's do a bench. although it's not i don't really like this much but let's do eight and cpu run so in this test bench, the raspberry pi 5 will get you 10,500 ish in terms of score here we're getting 12,900 so call it 13,000 so it's definitely faster than raspberry pi 5 that's for sure so let's keep going uh, one thing at a time so let me also check the ethernet make sure it's actually gigabit although gigabit is not impressing me anymore now i demand 2.5 so let's see okay don't drop anymore that's it where you should stay okay a little bit low very little i usually see 935 940 that's expected from a gigabit ethernet i'm getting 920 it's okay it's acceptable that's fine generally speaking now i'm gonna try the driver stuff but before go there i just want to very quickly just show you as is when you get the board this is the browser you're gonna get and this is the playback that you're gonna see okay so they say mere tech it's in the home page of the browser and then if we go to youtube you never know maybe i'm wrong maybe it's not gonna stutter maybe it's not gonna drop frames demo let's see so let's start from 4k so i'm playing a 4k right now 4k 60 fps it is stuttering and dropping frames okay let's go down 14 40p let's try that well much 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 more smooth okay it's playing well it's not really dropping that much of frames but it's still dropping and the 1080p it's still dropping but it's very smooth as you can tell it's playing video very smoothly you can't really tell as you're watching it but it's dropping some frames not much because you can see sometimes it doesn't even drop any but it drops anyway that's what you will see the temperatures are cool i'm not even getting a little bit heat so let me see as you can see here the temperatures are in the expected and acceptable range so let me do the stress ng test one more time just so you can see the power consumption is still six watts that's super impressive and idle watt is 2.5 as you can see temperatures never go above 42 i guess that's the cap i told you it's not even a little bit hot in here no not at all so thermals are very impressive power consumption is very impressive 
so far my observation and video playback was acceptable and passable with llvm pipe okay no gpu driver and this rock chip but hopefully we'll see what i can do that being said i'm gonna find out the gpio pins bring out the multimeter try the gpu stuff and i will see what i can find i will be right back give me a couple of minutes a few moments later all right so we are back let me show you a couple of things so i did a gl mark and i got the score of 412 and if i do another fast fetch you will see that now it is detecting the molly g52 i was able to install the panfrost i really didn't do anything special i just installed the panfrost driver so that being said i also want to show you one thing very quickly in terms of gpio their documentation is okay i'm not saying it's the best i'm just gonna say it's okay Here here's how you can do so they are saying is there's like two gpio right you have to calculate it basically with a formula where was that yeah here you go gpio chip times 32 plus group times 8 plus number and they have a long as explanation on how you get to the number so what i'm doing here in the gpio 4 c6 that's the pin 18 over here that i'm connected and pin 6 is ground right so pin 18 i connected the vcc as you can see it's right now zero and that's the 150 i'm not gonna do the math i'm just gonna use what they are using and if i open up the terminal you will see that i already did echo 150 i exported it i set the direction out and now as you can see in the screen if i set the value to one it goes to 3.2 3.3 and if i set the value to zero it goes down to zero so gpio works but you gotta do math instead if they had a map like every other vendor i would have appreciated more but this is acceptable at least they have the pdf explains how to do it and everything is working so gpio stuff is cool and fine that being said driver is also installed and uh, the thing is i tried to play video again it didn't really make that much of a difference but i'm gonna be honest as you can see the stutter is gone so at least the stutter was resolved by installing that panfrost mesa driver so i'm going to enable the stats for nerds 1080p as you can see it's not dropping any frames okay but if i go to 1080p by the way 60 fps okay if i go 4k let's try now so it's playing it's not stuttering it goes up to 6.5 6.4 6.5 6 and it's dropping here and there 4k but it's okay it's not stuttering at least you see the mouse is not stuttering anymore that one got resolved by installing the pan frost if you do like 1080p or maybe even 1440p i think it wasn't dropping frames here let me see barely though okay it's dropping frames but as you can see the playback is near perfect you don't really see it it's smooth relatively so i just wanted to show you guys this as well so another thing i forgot to show you guys is actually this i installed a 980 pro into this right so let's do an hd parm and the t direct dev nvme n1 let's see what we are getting in this okay that's what we are getting uh raspberry pi 5 with the pcie gen 3 do better you get like 700 in here but 300 is okay let's do lspci mesh vv let's see the link capabilities and speed samsung yeah there you go this is the 980 pro it is okay it should do better so why it's doing that it's downgraded x1 that's what you're getting it should be like 700 raspberry pi that's what you get but raspberry pi 5 with the nvme ssd hat but this is what you're getting in this board but that being said at least with the pan fork mesa the stutter is gone okay just if you wonder what i did this is just one of them i don't even know who owns this rock next i just found the first one i just googled mess up pan fork and i found this repo doesn't matter it's actually a fork of some other repo but anyway i saw it's easy i just copy pasted this basically i installed it then i installed the drm i installed the waylands literally copy paste copy paste didn't do anything and then i just installed the compiled this repo which is mess up pan fork and then at the end i just ran this i added it to ld library path did an ld config and everything started to work better stutter is completely gone as you can see my mouse you see it's not stuttering anymore so i hope i wish maybe the vendors either add it to their operating systems or just give it to, as a step to 
the users, but that's what it is. And as you can see, GGPIO is working fine as well. They have a lot of other examples for how to control the lights. As you can see, the lights over here set it to on and off. Those are the lights and other stuff. The LED examples. The PDF is very, very comprehensive. Okay. So that is, I got it from here. You just go to d.mirtech.com and the board name, basically MYDLR3576. And I just downloaded the software files and that PDF was inside it. And the Debian that I'm showing you guys is this. Okay. And then there's sources, which is 18 gigabytes. You can compile your own Debian with this. And there is also a Linux version that is also source files. And it's very lightweight Linux coming with from Mir that if you don't want to use the Debian and all the bells and whistles, you can just use this image. Overall, what I'm going to say is this board did not disappoint. It is very, very sexy board. I have to show you guys this again. And the SOM is very small, compact and looking nice. And the board and the heat sink is doing great job. Idle is 2.6. As you can see, it's very, very low power when its system is idle. And the stutter that was my issue and that is completely gone after Mesa pan fork install. So I am going to call this a win. It's a good board. For 150, you get this, and for 100 bucks, you get this. I don't have any other carrier board that would accept this. Like Serac, some ones we played it with some other ports that you could stick it in there. So it works with other devices, but this is proprietary to them. So I hope they come up with some that you can install, like I don't know, six of these. So like a cluster that we did in this channel, you can see. But other than that, this is impressive. I like it. Thumbs up. Everything they promised delivered and it is working. So I just wanted to put this in your radar. Full disclosure, they don't even know I'm doing this video. Nobody shipped it to me. I bought both. I bought this and I bought that. So I just liked it. I wanted to buy, try and show it to you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know if you have any questions. And thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.